Okay, so this is chapter 6, Data Description again. So today we are going to learn about Pearson Coefficient of Skewness. Okay, so when we are talking about Pearson Coefficient of Skewness, we actually have two formula for them. So you can either use 3 times with mean minus median over standard deviation, or you can use mean minus mode over standard deviation. So we can actually use either one of these both. So both of them will give us the same thing. So if this one is a positive number, this one should also give us some positive number. If this is negative, this is also negative. So you can choose either one. Normally the question will guide you whether to use mean and median or the mean and the mode. So you have to choose very carefully which formula you want to use. Okay, so S SK, so this is SK, SK stands for Pearson Coefficient of Skewness. So if let's say your SK is equal to zero, so what can we say about our data is that this is very symmetrical. If let's say your Pearson Coefficient of Skewness is greater than zero, so that means this is some positive number so if you have positive number, this is positively skewed. Or you can say that this is definitely skewed to the right. Okay, so SK less than zero, it means that the value of SK is negative. So since the value of SK is negative, you can see that this is negatively skewed. Or you can say that it should be skewed to the left. Okay, so let us try some example. Okay, so the first one, the number of games of tennis play in a given competition by a random sample of students were as follow. So we have the number of games on the left hand side. On the right hand side, we have the number of students. So this is actually an ungrouped data, but with distribution table. Okay, so this is X. The number of students will become the F. So 0, 41, 1, 12, 2, 2, 3, 1, 4, 1. Calculate the Pearson coefficient of skewness by using the median. So we have to choose the formula with median. And then we need to state the type of distribution of the above data. Whether do we have positively skewed or negatively skewed. Okay, so we have the number of games on the left hand side. So like I told you before, this is X. The number of students, that is F. So we are going to use this formula because from the question, the question asks to use median. So the formula that we are going to use is 3 mean minus median over standard deviation. Okay, so from this table, what you need to do is you have to find what is the value for summation of fx. And then you need to know what is the value for summation for fx squared. So what do we mean by fx? is x multiply with f, x with f, x with f, x with f, x with f, and then add everything together. So that is summation for fx. Summation for fx square, that means for each x, square them first before you multiply with f. So 0 square times 41, 1 square times with 12, 2 square times with 2, 3 square times with 1, 4 square times with 1. So do get these two values first because we have to calculate the mean and the standard deviation. Okay, so summation for fx, I already calculated them for you. So this is 23. Summation for fx square, this is equal to 45. So firstly, let us calculate what is the mean. So the mean denoted by x bar. So the formula is summation for fx over summation of f. So summation for fx, I already calculated them for you, which is 23. Summation of f, you can actually calculate here. The summation of f is actually equal to 57. So this is 23 over 57. So this is 0 0.404. 
So this is our mean. So to calculate the median. So this is actually ungrouped data. So we have to go to the last one. So this is an odd number. So we know that if we have an odd number to calculate the median, we simply need to add 1. So this one should be 57 plus 1 over 2. So we have to find this observation. So 57 plus 1, 58 over 2. So you can get this. So, so this is 29. The 29 observation. So the 29 observation is actually in the first row because we have 41 inside here. So that means your median should be 0. So I already have the mean. The mean is 0 0.404. The median is 0. So now I need to calculate my standard deviation. So firstly, let us calculate the variance. So the formula for variance is summation for fx square minus summation for fx square over n and then divide everything with n minus 1. So we are going to have 45 minus 23 square over so this is 57 and then divide everything by 56. So this one going to give you 0. Point. So this is 0. 0.638. So this is your variance. To calculate your standard deviation, standard deviation is simply S. So S is equal to the square root of 0. 0.638. Therefore, your standard deviation will be 0 0.799. Okay, so calculate into here. So we are going to have 3 times with the mean is 0 0.404 minus with the median which is 0 over the standard deviation which is 0 0.799. So if you calculate this using your calculator, you should be able to get 1.517 as you can see the value in front of here is positive therefore we can say that this is positively skewed or you can also use this one skewed to the right so since we have some positive number Positively skewed or skewed to the right hand side. Okay, so let us go to the next one. Okay, so the table below shows the test score for a sample of 60 students. So we have the score here and the frequency. So this is a group data. Calculate the Pearson coefficient of skewness by using the mode. So we need to use the formula with the mode. State the type of distribution of the above data, whether is it positively skewed or negatively skewed. Okay, so let us go to the table. So we have a score, we have the frequency. So since this is a group data, you need to know what is your midpoint. So firstly, calculate the midpoint. So to know the midpoint, you simply add 5 with 19 and then divide them by 2. So this is 12 and then 20 plus 34, divide them by 2, 27. 35 plus 49, divide them by 2, so this is 42, and then the next one is 57, 65 plus 79, so this is 72, 80 plus 94 over 2, so this is 87. Okay, so once you have your midpoint, the frequency here is simply F. Then you have to calculate a few things. So firstly, do make sure you know what is the value for summation of F, the total frequency. Second, you need to know what is the value for Fx. So X multiply with F and then keep on multiply and then take the sum of it at the end and then summation for Fx square. 
So fx squared simply means that for each x, you square them and then you times with f. So 12 square times with 2, 27 square times with 7, 42 square times with 11, 57 square times with 12, 72 square times with 20, 87 square times with 8. And then you can get the value for summation of fx squared. So summation for fx is actually 60. Summation for fx, so this is 3, 4, 9, 5. Summation for fx squared, so this is 2, 2, 8, 0, 1, 5. So this is the value for summation for f, fx and fx squared. Okay, so firstly, we need to know what is the value for the mean. So mean is simply summation for fx over summation of f. So summation for fx is 3, 4, 9, 5 over summation of f, which is 60. So if you take the mean, the mean will be 58.25. So this is your mean. And then to calculate the mode, so this is a group data, the mode is LK plus with D1 over D1 plus with D2 multiply with the class size which is C. So this is equal to, so find out the class mode. The one with the highest frequency is this one, so this is our class mode. So now the lower boundary, 65 plus 64 divided them by 2, 65 64 divided them by 2. So this one gonna be 64.5 plus. So D1 is the difference between 20 and 12. So this is 8 over 8 plus. So D2 is the difference between 20 and 8. So this is 12. Meanwhile, the class size. So I already know the lower boundary is 64.5. The upper boundary is 79.5 because we have 80 plus 79 over 2. So 79.5 minus 64.5. So this is equal to 15. So calculating the mode, the mode will give you 70.5. So now we have to calculate our standard deviation. So calculate the variance first. Variance noted by S square. So this is summation for fx squared minus summation for fx squared over n over n minus 1. So summation for fx squared 228015 minus, so we have 3495 with a square over, so the number of data is 60 over n minus 1, 59. So the value of this is 414.09. So this is the variance. To get the standard deviation, you have to take the square root of them. So let me squeeze a little bit over here. So s is simply the square root of 414.09, which will give you standard deviation 20.35. Okay, so since we already have the mean, the mode here, this is the mode, and I already have the standard deviation, so let us copy down everything into the formula. So SK is equal to the mean, which is 58.25, minus the mode, which is 70.5, over the standard deviation, which is 20.35. So the value for our Pearson coefficient of skewness is negative 0 0.60. As you can see, the sign here is negative. Therefore, we can say that this is negatively skewed. Or you can also use skewed to the left.